Hey everyone, we are teaching Tilt Brush and we're going to be doing page three of the brushes as basic brushes three. Now with our brushes, there are more advanced and inter interesting effects like our audio version of these brushes. But for this class, we're just going to use the basic brushes themselves. Starting from page one, we're going to be doing page three of the basic brushes set. Now again, we're going to be using advanced mode versus beginner's mode but we are just sticking with a basic way these brushes are going to work. So starting at the very top, coarse bristles. This one is greatly affected by the size of your brush. So I'm going to go nice and big. I'm also going to go for a nice medium color here. Coarse bristles gives you actual brush strokes that you can see as you're painting. So it does try to give you this texture. You can also use it for things like grass textures growing up all along the bottom of the screen here. At smaller sizes, fur or any kind of smooth, uh, I mean rough type of texture. Instead of a smooth coverage, we're getting this thick, almost fuzzy type of painting. A lot of artists use this as a fill type of thing, as a smooth, soft brush rather than a solid marker. We don't get ribbons of color so much as an area smudged in of color. Coarse bristles is a lot of fun to use and is a very versatile brush set to use. Dr. Wiggles is again another visible brush tool, but you can see it's animated. There's a motion to it. There's a flicker to it. Regardless of what color you use, we've got this feeling of motion that the brush gives to your brush strokes. This is Dr. Wiggles brush number two of the third set of brushes, Dr. Wiggles. Next up is electricity, which exactly as you would expect, gives you great blasting bolts of electricity. Now the size of the brush does affect the size of the bolt. So I'm gonna make everything small, go for a large brush and do a large lightning bolt. I'm now gonna go back to normal size. And we've got this gigantic lightning bolt standing next to me here. I'm now going to go very small and make my brush very small and do some small lightning. So when I go back to normal size, I've got both very large, you can even barely see the tiny one in here, there he is, very small lightning. It is directly affected by your color and the brightness value darkness value of the colors you use. So you can get a lot of variation using the electricity paintbrush. Electricity. Streamers. I'm going to make this very big so you can see the streamers. Because if you make it very small, those streamers themselves get smaller and smaller and smaller until you can barely see these little streamers that we're doing streamers brush. Again, the color affects the tails. Brightness, if I go for a very pale blue, you can see they're nearly white as opposed to the dark blue version where the tails are visible blue. Streamers, brush number uh, four on page number three. Hypercolor. This one actually is a variable sort of iridescent. It'll actually change as we sit here and watch it. Again, brush size just affects the size of the brush you're painting with, but you can see how it cycles through a series of color. That's a brush called hypercolor. There we go. Hypercolor little piece symbol is the one we're playing with. Let's clear this out and look at the next brush. Bubbles. We love bubbles. Bubbles are fun. Now you'll notice bubbles have a lot of motion. They don't go anywhere. They just sort of warble around. And again, I could go for a large scale, large brush, big bubbles, combined with lots of little tiny bubbles. Tiny. No, we won't go there. Uh, you can see how this is a fun tool to use. And again, the color of your brush does indeed affect the color of your bubbles. Bubbles brush. Second, moving right along, is the Neon Pulse tool. 
This is again going to make a large. You can see it just makes a pulse of your color following your tube. So if I paint a long thing, it's a neon light pulse following whatever it is. You can see the actual tube it follows through. And again, the variations in color and brightness will indeed affect the color and brightness of the light going through the tube. Whether it's a pale pink or a dark red, the neon pulse. We'll be playing with other variations of using the audios and things, but that's the basic version of our neon pulse tool. Cell vinyl. Cell as in cell shading, a very common thing that originally was for cell painted cartoons, but is now a type of 3D effect. So as I paint this, you can see how it's got this sort of black outline. So it's supposed to simulate a cartoon type of thing. So if I wrote this, oops, let's get rid of that piece. There we go. You can see how it gives us this outline a black outline around the things that we paint. So as we paint it in, it's like somebody drew that with a magic marker. But the perspective will change, that outline will change. So cell vinyl, it's meant to be like a strip of vinyl with that cell shading black outline attached to it. You can get a lot of really nice effects. It helps things really stand out as you're painting with them. Cell vinyl. Hypergrid is kind of cool. Because when you paint, you leave this grid behind. So if I go for a larger brush or a larger size, and I go back to normal, you can see the structure that it builds, this grid structure that your paintbrush is painting in. Again, it's all affected by color and variation, that type of thing, but it's a neat way of doing a large amount. Combine this with a straight edge tool, which we'll look at in a different lesson, you can make these sort of cityscapes using these types of effects. That's the hyper grid paintbrush in this third set of basic brushes. Next to hyper grid is the light wire. This is basically Christmas lights. So even though I've got purple, when I paint this, it's just a series of Christmas lights. I'm going to go for a smaller size and paint a bunch of them. And you can see it's a series of Christmas lights. So the color of your brush, I can go for a vibrant green, tints the cable itself, but has no direct effect on the lights that sparkle. So if I go for a dark, dark red, large brush, and I go back to normal, you can see there is a red tint but the lights themselves are unaffected. So size of brush will have an effect. Color will tint the wire. This is the light wire. But if you'll also notice it's at a regular interval. So if I'm careful, I can try to just get the same knobs going at the same time. You know, you can play with this as a way of making, again, cityscapes, any kind of blinkity light. It's a useful little tool. Light wire. Chromatic wave, when I paint this in, it's got this warbly two-tone type of thing. I'm now going to choose a different color. Let's choose green. Green, and look, it's got the previous colors mixed into it. I'm going to go for a yellow. So now I've got the green and the red with the yellow stripe. And then when I go to just a simple grayscale, it's got those previous colors mixed into it. Now the waviness, when we start playing with the audio tools, those waviness will start synchronizing with our music. But for this basic one, it's all about just painting with that particular tool. Chromatic wave, chromatic meaning it's remembering the colors you used. Wave, because that warbliness uh, is what we're going to be playing with with audio tools and things. So chromatic wave. Final tool for this set is dots. Can you guess what it's going to do? And again, size of the brush is the size of the dots. Now you make everything very small and go for a very small dots. And then I'm going to go very big 
with very big dots. So when I go back to normal size, you can see the variation in the dots that we can create here. Combination of this, the light wire and the hypergrid, you can really make some cool futuristic cities, that type of thing. And some of the other lessons will be playing with those. Do that combined with environments and light sourcing and you can make just about any type of creation you want. So this was the third page of brushes. It's all about more creativity, more variation on the types of things you can show. So I'm gonna switch back to some green electricity here and we're gonna sign off for today. Thank you for joining us on Teaching Tilt Brush. We're going to be continuing uh, the series each week on Sundays, so feel free to join us live. Otherwise, feel free to give us messages in the comments and things, and we'll try to get you the answers and the types of things you need to do. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.